Well, that's not this kind of that kind of show. I would. I, I'm not going to go in depth on my VR porn experience, but uh, <laughs> we'll do that on a separate podcast. <laughs> yes, that's for the that's for cinematic suffering after hours. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, well, uh, welcome to Cinemax Suffering. I'm Jason. There's Clay. I'm, I'm Clay. So excuse the upshot. I'm having a uh, technical problem, so this is about as good as it gets. So. That's good. That's okay. We See can... my nasal hair. Oh yeah, yeah. They they look really well groomed, actually. They're flowing, flowing <laughs> in the breeze. <laughs> well, uh, Clay, we we've had some time to to sit and marinate with a movie that we watched a week ago. Drinking it in, yes. We're drinking it in, and you know, I was convinced I was going to be a a convert to Christianity because <laughs> you know that you know I was like I was really feeling the pull of the Lord, and I was like, this movie yeah. may be speaking out to me. Maybe that's why I was feeling this feeling. And then afterwards, I, I just dropped back into my harsh nihilistic, uh, atheistic ways because of this movie. So I'm blaming all my spiritual deadness to this movie yeah so, I, it's anyway. a good it's a that's a good scapegoat because uh you know i'm doubling down i'm gonna um send all my paperwork off to the uh satanic temple and i'm also <laughs> undercover gonna gonna join the uh satanic church because those okay. two factions they don't get along they're very yeah, yeah. at odds with one another the boat but i you know i'm gonna be a rebel and just join both i'm really gonna double down on satan <laughs> that's a good that's a that's a good idea actually i i wonder i wonder if you ever get caught for that you know i hear you're going to the satanic temple well you know you both they do good work to... get out of here <laughs> be thee gone be thee gone satanist not we're just we're, we're, we're only <laughs> we're only here for for orgies with fat girls that wear black lip <laughs> gloss Oh well, yeah. So we got we you 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 recommended bloody bloody Bible camp. I, I don't did. know if it was I don't know if it was such a, a recommendation. It was just like something you threw a dart at and said, "Oh, okay, let's <laughs> yeah, fucking look at this." <laughs> total transparency. This is this is the scientific way that I pick help to pick the movies that we're gonna watch. Mm -hmm. You know, we both contribute. It's a uh, you know, after all, it's a partnership. But um, when I'm kind of deciding on stuff that we should watch, I just go on to Prime. I go on to Amazon Prime. And then I just I, I find horror movies that are free on Prime. That's the first caveat. And then they have to look bad. And then <laughs> those are the ones that I'm like, yeah, we should watch this. Yeah, you, you, you definitely picked a doozy. This is yeah. the Bloody Bloody Bio Camp is a it's a movie about it. it's a slasher it's a slasher movie and again i've said this in plenty of other stuff that we've we've watched in the past i mean it all i can say is that it is a movie it it is i, I mean it's not all i can say but <laughs> it, it it endeavors to be a movie it does it does and luckily not a very long movie which is you know always a great pleasure when i see that there are you know, movies that are less than an hour and a half. I'm like, oh, thank goodness, we don't have to. Get yeah, that, that's the third thing I look out for. <laughs> yeah, runtime, <laughs> Run time for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this one. Uh, do you want to tell uh, tell us more about uh, well, the director? And what uh, what I can tell you is that it was uh, released originally in 2012. So this is a pre-pandemic film, which is kind of odd when you watch it you, because it stinks of the pandemic or some <laughs> result of it. Um, it uh, it's directed by the great Vito Trabuco. Tr Trabuco. Trabuco? I'm Tr terrible with names. Trabuco. Trabucho. 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 <laughs> and uh, co-written by uh, Trabuco and Shelby McIntyre. So two people are responsible for this. It was produced by Reggie Bannister, who many of you horror enthusiasts out there will recognize Reggie as the one of the protagonists in the uh, Phantasm series. He was, he was Reggie. He's yeah. good old Reggie. Everybody loves Reggie. Um, produced by him and David C. Haynes, whoever that is. Um, so the general plot is uh, it's a 1977 uh, group of young people. I'm not reading this right off of Wikipedia, by the way, uh, <laughs> are massacred at the hands of Sister Mary Chopper at the Happy Day Bible Camp. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it starts off, you know, I, I think I, I wanted to compare it to 
the Friday the 13th remake where you see a group of teenagers head into the forest. They go to Camp Crystal Lake. And for the first 20 minutes of the movie, you think this is our group of kids. This is who yeah. we're going to be with for the entire time. And then Jason comes out and just slaughters them all. And it's a beautiful opening sequence. And it, it was one of the best ones I had seen ever in a remake. And I was like, when I was watching Bloody Bloody Bible Camp, I was thinking of that. I was thinking of how expertly crafted that remake was <laughs> yes. and how flawless did they pulled that off um but yeah bloody uh i'm just gonna call it bible camp for right now uh, yeah how, how bible camp kind of <laughs> does the same thing except uh think trauma meets was yeah. so and then yeah. <laughs> a, a trauma was so collaboration <laughs> bloody bloody bible camp now like if you were to close your eyes and just imagine what the director of this film looked like what picture comes into your head just the first off the cuff instant when, when i think of the name vito chabucho i'm, I'm gonna say <laughs> i'm gonna call him the booch <laughs> the and, from here and, on out you're the booch i think of i think if a uh, a bald um heavily scarred <laughs> italian man who probably wears a fedora um dark sunglasses probably smokes a lot i would imagine in his <laughs> mid 40s mid 50s uh yeah, yeah he, he I, I i close yeah i pulled up a an interview with him i think that the, i think he's balding i think he got that he was wearing a jersey and he had braces on i thought he had some kind of like dollar store grill kind of situation but no there, there was, those were just braces so uh -oh. yeah he I guess my point is, is that he, <laughs> no offense, uh, it, Vito, but uh, he, he looks like somebody that would direct bloody, bloody Bible camp. <laughs> he looks like the person responsible for this feature. Well, the thing is, this this movie was the brainchild of Vito, and I think a friend of his, when they were just kind of throwing ideas around and uh, during film school or wherever they were going to school at, and that they decided just to go ahead and make this crazy comedy horror yeah. that they're placing it as. And it's one of those films that, you know, it, it it's bad. The acting's bad, but it's not, it's, it's self, it's self aware of itself. It's not like, I don't know, Goblin or Veronica. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like there's, it's, it's not, it's definitely not done earnestly. And, you know, like, I think we've watched enough of these turds to stop giving them a pass when they're, <laughs> when they, it, it's like, if I said the, just the most horrific thing imaginable and then was like, look, I'm just joking, guys, what's your problem? <laughs> you know, just <laughs> what's, what's the problem with the necrophilia, you know, like with the pet of necrophilia joke that I just made, I was That's joking. Right. It was a joke. It, yeah. It, rides hard on that uh that whole premise that look it's silly it's like ah, yeah but i mean and believe me i'm am not easily offended but geez louise they just they it was like an exercise in saying every naughty word that you're that polite society says don't say that right i mean there were um i mean we, we have to realize it was 2012 and while 2012 it uh, doesn't seem it's what 11 years ago now Golly, that, yeah getting old. yeah well, you, you would think, oh, that was a different time, but it wasn't that different of a time, no. really, because things were pretty much <laughs> similar. There, there's some uses that, like, as, like you said, I'm not offended by anything. No. There was a cool little uh, uh, accidental necrophilia scene that was, you know, <laughs> it was funny. I laughed when I saw it. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. But that it, was. It was it was way funnier than when they did it in uh, um, a Serbian film. Yeah, it was oh, way yeah. more laughs in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I only laughed a couple of times in Serbian. But this one, <laughs> it was uh, – I, I did laugh at that. There's some cool – There, I mean, that's cool. But, you know, there's, there's some laugh-out-loud moments that I really enjoyed in the film. Oh, yeah. But there was some stuff that – there's some language that they use. And, I, you know, when – when they refer to a transsexual, you know, they're using the, the slur of that word. And we're like, uh, yeah. I, that made me uncomfortable. I mean, because, you know, I, that's, you know, it's a horrible word to use when referring to someone uh, who's transsexual. And uh, we were both like, Oh, this is. <laughs> yeah. Th there were, there were multiple times during that, that we were like, Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Which, you know, and again, it puts you in the, in the, 
like the unfair position of being like, oh, well, I guess you're prude. You've gone all woke and that kind of thing. But, yeah. you know, I mean, it's it's weird. You spend enough time out in society and we've uh, kind of uh, like dialed back some of the things that we can say yeah. even in jest. You can argue whether that's OK or not or whether it's a war on words, whatever. I'll let somebody else uh, yeah. you know, feel that one, but it's still, it's arresting a little bit when it happens. Yeah. It's like, Oh, wow. Uh, you know, what did you just get out of the cryopod? Do you not get right? The yeah. And then that, that's, the, that's a slur I haven't used and I, I have used it way long, long, long ago. Um, but you know, knowing the people that I do now and, uh, how they would react to things like that. Yeah. I would definitely not use it now. And I, and I'm not going to say I was appalled and I would, you know, I'm going to ban this movie or any other movie that uses it, but it's just a, it's just a crude word to use. And out of everything in there, it was probably the most offensive thing, even over the neck accidental necrophilia. Part. <laughs> well, and I'll be honest with you. It was just such a barrage of sophomoric humor and just, just potty humor and just, infantile silliness that I, like i forgot they even said it it's just it was just yeah. one thing after another if there was a <laughs> if there was a more vulgar way to, to say that like to, to just pack a sentence with so many invectives <laughs> it, <laughs> it'd be impossible they just basically just went for it they said every all the naughty things that you're not supposed to say yeah. um the the thing barely held together as a narrative experiment <laughs> <laughs> it did. It, it did. And, you know, this. it just reminded me of a trauma film. And, you know, trauma it doesn't did. take itself seriously at all. And which isn't a bad thing in itself. But, you know, you know, when, <laughs> you know, you, there's a point that even when you watch bad movies that you're like, God, uh, I know they meant for this to be bad. But why did they go this specific direction with the feet? the bra badness of it. it you know we, we see this opening scene of in the 70s and that's i didn't even know that was supposed to be in the 70s when it opened up it just the hairstyles like, didn't help you with <laughs> oh the the weird wigs no they didn't help it help it somebody all. Uh, we could get into the wig part later but somebody involved in this feature had an a fetishistic obsession with wigs and not just the kind that you put on your head yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Talk, talking Merkins, <laughs> talking baby. Merkins, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're there. But you know, so we have this opening scene where all these people that are totally unlikable in this uh, <laughs> supposedly Bible camp and, you know, referring to the Lord, but being horny and wanting to have sex and do all this, you know, all the cool stuff, you know, and their sister, what is the, what's the name of the killer in here? Was it sister Mary? Sister Mary, Sister Butcher Mary, Sister Mary Butcher, Sister uh, Mary Chopper, Sister Mary Chopper, Sister Mary Chopper, Sister which, Mary Chopper, which uh, like, let's just scroll down to the cast list here. Reggie Bannister plays uh, stars in it as Father Richard Cummings. So that kind of <laughs> the, the, that kind of brilliant wordplay is is just, yeah, like on on par here it's just 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 filled up to the gills with that kind of witty right uh stuff and then of course you got uh you have uh such intriguing characters as skunk um oh yes yes skunk oh uh, it was skunk. <laughs> i don't remember the individual characters <laughs> names i remember uh what the one that's hard to forget is the uh the guy that is gay in everything but actuality as far as the character goes i was it was one of these things to where the more he talked about sex with women the more he <laughs> <laughs> the more he just really seemed to kind of reaffirm his gayness yeah <laughs> he he was unpleasant um his friend was <laughs> patently offensive as a human being just all of the male characters in this kind of made me ponder why women have anything to do with us as, right yeah as, as half of the populace why we just you know why a white line hasn't been painted around the planet <laughs> just, <laughs> separate only come yeah, together in just, moments yeah pick a hemisphere you're not right. allowed <laughs> unless you have you know some form <laughs> and triplicate because these dudes are just oh my god like if it's not the <laughs> the septic sludge pumping out of their face in the form of words it's just 
<laughs> you know, oh my god, I don't want to make fun of the way somebody looks, but they they did it intentionally. All the dudes in this are just sweaty, off putting, oh, yeah. oddly hairless. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or uh, just an abundance of hair that's that's off putting. Right. And then we have uh, the <clears throat> the glorious killer sister Mary Chopper, who mm. dons a nun's outfit and wears a uh, a devil mask as well, thus yeah. showing the duality of Sister Mary Chopper's inner soul. That's uh, yes. that's. I mean, if you, I, I really like to read in these films and break them down and um see what true meaning lies behind what the altar is trying to tell us. Yeah, because it's not even, it's in his heart. It's not in his head or in any kind of frontal lobe. <laughs> it's in the medulla oblongata. <laughs> but yeah, Sister Mary Chopper kills off the first group of kids. Thank goodness. I was just waiting for that to happen. <laughs> and then we're introduced to the second group of kids who come in with our father Cummings, played <laughs> gloriously by Reggie Bannister. Yes. Who, who was in no way just making up every utterance of his dialogue. As it, <laughs> If this thing had a script, I'll eat my hat. Because, <laughs> and I mean, I, I, I'm i glad that they employed, you know, the disabled to make this film. But they let, they let like, blind people do the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even in the ballpark, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was just the auto-generated captions or something that was coming across the screen because the stuff that was being said on screen was quite different from what the captions were saying. So, <laughs> which thankfully it's like you know, I've, uh, I, and I, I want to meet the deaf people that are watching this. I there's no reason the deaf people would have better <laughs> right. taste than the, than you know those that can hear, but. Mm. Right. But, you know, well, I, I could delve deeper into whatever semblance of a plot the movie has. But yeah. I think if you know what we're talking about, it's a slasher. It takes place in a campground. You, you've you heard us talk is rather crude and abrupt. <laughs> and there's some cool, funny moments. I don't really need to go any deeper. It's yeah. it's it's exactly what you would expect. Yeah. I Like, I don't know if I have early onset dementia or something, but I cannot... <laughs> I, for the life of me, I complained about the same thing the last time we reviewed one of these films. I cannot retain these movies after we watch them. They, they just literally, my brain's like, well, <laughs> it's the same way your <laughs> digestive system handles Del Taco or something. Right, it's right, like, right. Out, get out, you know. Like, <laughs> well, there's some, there's, there, you know, after we watch the film, there's <laughs> such a, a weird taste or vibe <laughs> left in the room that you just want to like back off and say, hey, you know, you want to review this like next week sometime and <laughs> like yeah yeah and then you know we'll hit each other up hey you want to review i was like oh i'm still not ready man I, yeah I, I just, i've got yeah like yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still yeah, processing I'm, some stuff right now yeah i'm gonna go i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna do some outreach work to the trans community <laughs> for for this yeah. movie so now we're, we're we're finally in a good place. We can come back and talk about what we specifically remember. And these are the parts that we remember. Just a whole <laughs> amalgam of smushed up parts and Sister Mary Chopper. But yeah, she killed people. A lot of stuff with penises. Um, you know, a, a decapitation scene where the person is uh, still having sex with the decapitated corpse. Which I uh, thought was just... hilarious. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, a lot of improv acting from actors that are woefully unprepared for the job. Uh, let me just kind of skim through the movie here and, sh and describe briefly what I'm seeing. A lot of people that look like they're in the later stages of uh, heroin, you know, opiate, <laughs> methamphetamine addiction. Uh, let me go forward here. Bad, bad wigs. Oh, my God, bad wigs. Yes. Somebody drove a truck into the front of a wig store and absconded with all the wigs. Yeah. I'm not sure who was the, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy who drove the van. They just put, they just plopped this. He was a bald guy, but they just plopped this wig on top of his head. And it, it looked like it was alive curling <laughs> around on his head, like some weird <laughs> tentacled monster. <laughs> it was just... never, <clears throat> it was, it was never put back on. Right. When they had to do other takes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i mean and to give you kind of a sense for the movie that we're talking about here like the opening scene or the opening dialogue is i and i i don't know if this is a direct quote but i think it is is how big do you think 
uh, Jesus's penis was or right. something, something along those lines. Yeah. You know, and let me see by the 14 minute mark is when you get full frontal female nudity with the Merkin. She's yeah. got on a Merk, which I, I guess they thought that was funny, but she, yeah, I guess they figured it's the seventies. Everybody had a big bush. Dude. <laughs> right. But yeah, she had like this wig that looked like they just <laughs> took some felt and kind of, <laughs> I mean, there, there's a joke I heard. Like, it looks like, uh, it looked like uh, she had uh, like Gary Coleman in a headlock from <laughs> different <laughs> <laughs> or in a leg lock, I should say. Uh, it was some off base joke that I, I saw come up that I was like, oh my God. Accidentally, you know, spilled a vat of Rogaine in her lap. That's, that's kind of how it looked. <laughs> Again, I, I think of scary movie when, you know, they're going to have sex and he opens up her pants and poof. Yeah. <laughs> Bats flying out. Yeah, yeah moths. <laughs> oh, for the simpler, more tasteful times of scary yes. movie. Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah, we didn't. We we can't. Uh, we certainly don't remember scary movie and the big splooge scene, paste plastering her to the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was done tastefully. Yeah. It was. That was. This, a, it was an art film. The, yeah, the, it was an art film. I think what I like best about artists. <laughs> I think what I like best about the Sister Mary Chopper, though, is that I'm looking at a still frame here of uh, <laughs> him, uh, her on the ground, and we see blue jeans, white socks, yeah. and tennis shoes sticking out from underneath the nun habit. And yeah, I'm like, you, you, even if I was a set designer or a, a costume designer, I would set him up with some, something a little bit more evil or you know maybe stylish <laughs> underneath there but no it's just the actor came in had blue jeans white socks and his sne dirty ass sneakers and that's what he's wearing so yeah and they they said like well you know we're gonna put the the nun's habit over you you know so that no one will see it no everyone will forgive this but that's another thing it's like you know it's it's one of the ways that you just kind of have to have at least a small amount of contempt for movies like this and Sharknado and these yeah. other films that are you're <laughs> you're taking advantage of the audience. There's got to be a level of earnestness to these movies that makes them charming, and yeah. that that charm is gone when you're just going out of your way to make it as like bad intentionally as possible and stupid, and muggy and silly dumb. yeah i thought uh I, you know like you said i i enjoyed certain pieces of it i i saw the comedy horror aspect of it and uh, i chuckle at a few parts that you know were funny um i thought one of the most unusual parts even though the whole movie was unusual there's a scene right here i'm going to show it oh okay <laughs> Oh boy! I don't know. I mean, everything was so campy and weird up to that part, but that just made everything say, "Is this a? Is this the part trying to portray olive oil and Popeye?" Or I, that's a hell of a reference. The I think the Molly was kicking in. Oh, it must have been. Yeah, it definitely must have been the Molly. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no way that drugs were not imbibed this the the weekend of filming of bloody bloody Bible. <laughs> oh, we got it. We do have to mention uh, their special guest star, of course. Yes, I'll let you. I'll let you spill the beans on that. Spoiler. Spoiler. Star of film and movies back in the late 70s and early 80s, maybe even the later 80s, maybe even the early 90s, maybe he did some weirder <laughs> stuff up in the late part of the 90s. Ron Jeremy plays the titular character known as Jesus. Jesus, H, which stands for holy Christ. Yeah. Yes, yep, that they, uh, they, they were very proud of themselves that they procured the talent of Mr. Jeremy. And, um, you know, I, I guess that they were able to film around his house arrest or whatever. I, I have yeah. to backtrack, although I don't think that Mr. Jeremy's legal troubles started that far back. And right, 2012 right. seems like a long, that seems like the days when Ron Jeremy guest starring in a movie was kind of funny and like, ha ha, it's Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Now it, it shut that shit down. Like, no, you cannot have a sex criminal in your film. It's, I haven't done any research. Is he still in locked up? Oh, geez. I don't know. 
I do not know in Google is Ron Jeremy uh, locked up, locked up. Uh, let's see. An L.A. County judge on Thursday reaffirmed a decision to release Ron Jeremy to private residence because he is incompetent to stand trial for more than 30 counts of sexual assault. Holy shit. 30 counts. 30 I mean, counts. Yeah, he's. Um, when was know, he arrested? What, what, what year was he arrested? Um, or, or know, let's see, like, uh, it must've been after this. It, it was, it was, I like, I'm just going for off memory here. It was, it was within like the last, um, is in the, within the last decade. It, it was yeah. not that, that long ago. Um, when, when was Ron Jeremy oh, it was arrested? 20, it was 2020. June of 20, ah, 2020. Yeah. yeah. I remember cause he had the mask on. He was yeah. trying to be all feeble, which Oh God. Yeah. That's, that's. Mm. Well, you know, I, I can understand people, you know, thinking he's, you know, this weird icon of pornography and I guess he was in a, a certain way back in those days, uh, but you know, it's my, how the, the great have fallen. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, no, nah, but uh, I mean, I'm, the last person that you would think that would even oh god what well, so, he's so disgusting i mean like i i my heart breaks for any of the victims but you know like i i, I feel like justice has been done on a very small level because uh, you know he owes me a lot of money for the movies <laughs> that i rented back in the day that, <laughs> that had him in it and like to give this context, like back in the day, they didn't put him on the front of the box. It wasn't no. like starring Ron Jeremy. They snuck that in because yeah. and it was always like the third scene into the feature that yep. you would be that you'd have to jump up and, you know, one handedly hit the fast <laughs> forward button to get past that gopher looking motherfucker. He's just right. so <laughs> off putting in every way. Yeah, and in this movie, he, his sleaziness does come through the screen, uh, virtually sliming up everything around you. The keyboards start oozing this filth <laughs> when he comes on screen. This yeah. viscous fluid, yeah, of unknown origin. And, it, and and really, it has no place. The, the, the it feels just like Jesus was kind of shoehorned into this. Uh, uh, maybe maybe not. Uh, Jesus is supposed to be responsible for Reggie being returned to life, but. You know, they could easily just written Reggie as not being completely dead and getting up and doing what he needed to do. But they they somehow they must have offered him an eight ball and, you know, like <laughs> a, a, a stab at the starlets of this this, you know, toxic movie. <laughs> Three <laughs> vials of penicillin to go along. <laughs> yeah, like an all over body condom to, <laughs> to ward off whatever 70s scabies the man right. has so just you know around. thinking you know just thinking how sleazy and slimy this movie was before this just kind of elevated it to that that <laughs> trash <laughs> it it did indeed yes yeah. so yeah well, that's i'm gonna go on a no recommendation for bible, <laughs> bible camp it, it was i mean it was it was a dumb movie I'm not, you know, I'm not just saying that because Ron Jeremy was in it, but yes, overall, it was just, it wasn't an enjoyable movie, except for that one scene where that the girl, I think her name is, uh, what is her name? Oh, it was Deborah Venegas. She played uh, Jennifer. She was just like, oh boy. Like, <laughs> All right. If you're going to watch it anyway for anything, watch it for her in that scene. Yeah. Least. Yeah. It was like a, a you you know, like just think back to your most vulgar. Uh, like you know off color friend and you know it's fun fun at a party for a minute but wears thin very quickly when the <laughs> when the cops the bouncers and angry uh spouses show up <laughs> well i was gonna read uh some bloody bible camp reviews but i don't think go ahead uh, <laughs> let me see just read one can... read one let me see if i can find um fi so bad it's almost good almost Fine <laughs> comics. Fine is give it a four out of ten stars on IMDb. Fine comic sex and gore during the titles. Dull silliness for the most of the rest. Finally picks up at the end with a surprise appearance that saves the campiness of the camp's events and conspicuously atrocious acting. So this person was like thinking Ron Jeremy saved the film. So uh, that is a chronic masturbator. <laughs> oh, I have fond memories of Ron Jeremy back when I would go to the old theater in New York time, in the New York Square, 
and uh, uh, they'd have the porno theaters, and you could just slip and slide along the tracks there, just <laughs> get in your seat. I just I love the way that Ron Jeremy's hairy, uh, taut gut would just kind of drape over these poor women that were at the bottom of the uh, of their lives, just hitting rock bottom to be in this movie. With this <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I was thinking uh, <clears throat> some people have like. Oh, there it is. A blockheaded comedy. Oh, this one gave it a 2 out of 10, so it's here. A blockheaded... Oh, this is going to have spoilers in it, too, so if you made it to the end of this mm -hmm. review, you're going to hear some spoilers. Yep, spoiler alert. Uh, a a blockheaded comedy horror with religious overtones, bloody, bloody Bible camp is as silly and cheesy as it sounds. I always find the presence of a Ron Jeremy cameo <laughs> guarantees that a film will be really bad, and so it proves here. To my surprise, he plays Jesus in this film, which may be the most imaginative that the movie gets. <laughs> Otherwise, it's an inept trauma-style trash flick, complete with cheap effects, voyeurism, lots of cheese, wooden acting, and Phantasm's Reggie Bannister as a priest. Two out of ten. So there well, it is. And, and that there is a definite horror fan because they mentioned Reggie as, you know, being in Phantasm. So well, they didn't even mention him being in Phantasm. They just, oh yeah, I guess they did. I, I just read the fucking thing, Jason. What are you doing? Sorry, um, like, you, it's, you're, you're you're having the same problem I have, where it just purges, <laughs> just purge that. Uh, we did. We purged a lot. Yeah, I did uh, yeah. actually do a little kind of recap for myself, especially <laughs> just trying to find that. <laughs> That stupid little clip I showed, but um, <laughs> yeah, I was uh before we got on tonight, I was I was trying to rewatch the beginning of it, hoping that it would kick in whatever <laughs> you know, <laughs> languishing synapses are back yeah. there trying to fire it's shit in your head, just going. <laughs> I don't need your cow. It's like okay. you can have you can either have bloody bloody Bible camp or you can have your childhood memories of your first Christmas because one's going. Yeah. Yeah, one is going, so I choose my mine just accidentally melded together. So now Ron Jeremy is my father in my first Christmas. Yeah, that it did the same thing to me. Like he's yeah. actually Santa Claus presenting me with my Bert and Ernie stuffed toys as a child. Oh God. Sorry. We we're, we're both very traumatized now, apparently. Yeah, yeah. All right, so bloody, bloody Bible camp. Boop. Bloop. Yeah, Blue, that's or, a thumbs down. Bleh. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. You know, I don't know. There's not enough weed and and you know, booze on the planet. So. Yeah, and please, if you're an actor on the film, if you're a director on the film, don't come... Then fuck uh, you. Uh, yeah. no, <laughs> don't come trashing us. You know, we're not the only people to say this. You must be used to it, and your your th skin should be very, very thick by now. I I say I say it each time this pops up. This The, the actors and directors of these movies account for about 88% of our viewership. They We always hear from them, and I'm... <laughs> I'm always torn because it's like, oh, cool, but also I don't care. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's always fun getting braided by an actor or other director that was in one of those films. But um, <laughs> so, Clay, uh, do we have anything to promote? Do anything we need to push? Do we have any sponsors yet? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't. I didn't have the. I don't have the ad read ready. Okay. But next time we'll have the extra special ad read ready. Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that's prepared. I did get like some weird invoice where the people were charging us to read their ad. Yeah, it, I'm pretty sure it's the other way around, isn't it? We don't. Uh, well, I mean, do it just. Uh, I mean, I paid it out of our cinematic suffering uh, bank account, and so we're at negative twenty now. 20 oh. bucks out so i i'm not sure if i did that right but we'll read it next week or you know whenever we see our next movie yes that'll that'll be our next ultra funny shtick is is totally real uh and and in no way going to uh confuse the algorithm of netflix ad reads um i think that uh like i'm looking at my list of movies here we've got a uh, creepy pasta the hoax uncle peckerhead <laughs> and the boneyard and evie yeah, you know, those are some uh, some more recommendations for possible next movies. Do any of those sound um, sound appealing? I'll have to go down that list and uh, look at these various trailers, perhaps, and we'll make a a sound judgment. See what happens. <laughs> well, do you have any uh, video game stuff coming up that you want to promote, or? Uh, no, I'm not doing anything like that. Uh, I'm just, uh, yeah, my my wife. And I run a business called Damage Case Goods, and it's on Instagram. Cool. And we do vending events, and it's wooden retro resin coated plaques with cool fantasy, horror, heavy metal art. 
t-shirts cool. and other stuff designs so we do that on the side as long as our along with our full-time jobs along with doing this as well and so you know we've, we've got our hands full what nice. about you uh well i just started a second youtube channel because you know i guess i'm not busy enough where I'm, yeah. i record myself uh, drawing the various uh weird stuff uh, from my imagination part of which um is going to be the cinematic suffering art that you see as the thumbnail art so you can check that out uh just uh search for clay Tanix art layer um or one of these times when i've built up a couple videos we'll maybe post a link on here right now i've just uh made one video public so it's a very fledgling kind of thing yeah so, um, yeah that one video was really it was really fascinating to see because i've never seen you do your art process except when cool. you were in a teenager and yeah, seeing you draw at your desk yeah so seeing you actually do it on the tablet and now and how you go about it it was just really cool to watch and oh, it's cool. all fast forwarded you know it's not like you're s sitting there and seeing every little curse mason but you're going like pretty quick you have that camera spread. yeah it's 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 sped up to four times and some of the the later videos it's sped up to about eight to eight speed so yeah, yeah I, i've speeded up pretty good but we'll, we'll see how that goes we're just throwing stuff out there but cinematic suffering is definitely our passion and we're excited about it hopefully we get some more viewership here, some more uh some more fans here soon Fansos, fansos, we love them fansos. Hey guys, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget That's to right. subscribe, uh, hit that like button. We're on all podcasting platforms. So if you're listening to this on Spotify or iTunes or wherever, please leave us a five star rating. And until next time, may you all suffer. Hey, how about that? Is that a, is yeah, that an outro? That's, may you all suffer. I love it. <laughs> all right, bye, bye. See ya.